How's it going guys? It is here, the Master Grade Gundam Barbatos. So this kit, I've got to say, is pretty amazing. I should also preface this by just saying that I'm, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Iron Blood Orphan series or like the designs that much in general, but despite that, this is a really super nice Master Grade that I can highly recommend to you guys. So it is pretty awesome. If you guys didn't see the live stream, you can go back and check that out. I live streamed uh, the build process for this. You can go back and watch that. It was a really fun build and the live stream was pretty fun as well. We had a kind of quiz and giveaway, so that's all sorted. And that was a lot of fun. I shared a lot of my thoughts about the building process all throughout the live stream as well. So it's worth checking out if you're interested. But for now, let's talk about my final thoughts about the kit now that I have it all built up and I'm ready to share this with you guys. And so as we get into it, as always, a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. If you want to check out this kit or anything else there on their site, the link to USA Gundam Store will be down below in the video description. Go there, check it out. You can save 10% off everything using the coupon code there, Zacharelius10. But so let's get into it here with the Master Grade Barbatos. It's amazing, and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So let's check out the articulation and all the finer details first. Right, so aside from the articulation, I'll also just point out some of the finer points of the build, little gimmicks and things like that as well. Now, as I said, the process of building this was quite complicated. It's a pretty complex build, especially a lot of the frames. So it's definitely, definitely much different from building the non-grade 1100 scale kit. I expected it to be, you know, kind of relatively similar, but it's not very similar to that at all. Building the frame of this takes some time. You really have to pay attention to what you're doing in the manual because it's just pretty complex. So the whole time building it, I kept coming back to that thought thinking like, man, this is a pretty intricate build. And so as you guys can see, I mean, there's just part separation and details everywhere. A lot of parts of the armor, like you can see, have these some big open areas where there's not a whole lot of detail uh, on the outside armor, but there's a good amount just here and there, but especially on the frame, any parts of the frame, even parts that end up getting covered up, there's a ton of detail in the frame. So definitely this is one like where you're going to want to do, well, I mean, if you're going to be painting it up, you're going to want to do probably just as much work like detailing up everything on the frame as even the outer armor as well. So it's a really cool frame to build up. You've got a ton of pistons everywhere. As you can see, just a little silver bit. You've got some pistons up here in the arm. You've got pistons on the back of the arm, in the back there, on the back of the legs down here. And so you've got plenty of really nice little details, those bits all in the plated silver. And then here for the eyes, it's a clear green piece. You do have these foil stickers you can stick on there instead if you prefer. But I just thought, I just want to show you guys the clear green part there for the eyes. As far as the articulation for the head, you've got a joint at the kind of base of the neck that will move like that. But then you've got a joint in the base of the head as well, which will also, if you kind of shimmy that around, you can get that up to all the way up to there, which is pretty awesome for the neck joint. You can see you just got a bunch of the inner detail there exposed there at the neck as well. And so for upward movement, this thing is pretty amazing there. And again, just all the color separation, part separation there in the face is amazing. The cockpit hatch does open by sliding this down just a little bit. It's a little bit tricky because the gold part underneath this blue part tends to kind of get stuck there a little bit, but that opens up and you can see down into there you have your seated Mikazuki pilot figure inside there. You can really only see like the top of his head, but he's in there as you can see and so that uh, does just open up a little bit like that. Anyway, then the head will go then all the way down to there like so. So neck articulation, fantastic. Here in the torso section, we've got kind of two points of articulation here at the base where like the center part of the torso connects to the top half. And so you can see as you move that up and down, the pistons will move and you can move this side to side, rotating like that, but also kind of this side to side movement. The pistons will move a little bit like that as you rotate that kind of off to the side at an angle. But then we do also have another point of articulation for once you've got this kind of all the way forward at the lower point, then there's another upper point above that for further bend forward. Kind of it's more like the front is kind of already as far forward as it's going to go, but you can bring the back up a little bit more. And there's a little piston up inside there as well for that, for bringing the back up just a little bit more, even farther forward. So the stomach crunch is pretty intense and you can also move that back a little bit back to there as well. And it's going to be a little bit tricky to show you, but you can see like the turbines of the Ahab reactor, those bits up in here, those will just spin. They're not connected to anything. They're just a separate part that just spins freely up inside there. So you can't really do a whole lot really with that, but it's just a cool gimmick that they built into it that those can actually spin like that. And then the shoulders. Okay, you've got two pistons here, which will be exposed when you move the shoulders out like that. You can see one connecting to like towards the back of the torso and one connecting on the top of the torso here. 
both of those get exposed when you rotate the shoulder forward. It looks awesome. So the shoulder ultimately will come forward to about to there. The armor will move up and down on its own, kind of similar to the 100 scale and the HD, but it's just connected in a little bit better way, so it's actually a little bit stronger of connection in this case. And now from when the kit was first announced, I had doubts about this seam line here on the side of the shoulder. It seems like they've changed it up a little bit. They've made this groove so that it makes, it's like a really super wide panel line, like a one and a half or 1.2 millimeters it looks like there. So they've hidden this seam line here on the shoulders as just a really wide panel line, so that's okay. And the clear pink parts here look fantastic. Now here on the shoulder, it looks much brighter because the part underneath is white. Here on the chest and on the knees, it's not as apparent, still looks cool, but it's not quite as apparent without a white backing. Both of these are just set against the dark frame, so they're not quite glowing as brightly, but here, at least on the shoulders, uh, with the white part behind it, that looks really nice, but I just love the fact they use the clear parts for those that look really good. But anyway, even with the shoulder armor up and out of the way, you can still only bring the arm up to a little bit kind of more than 90 degrees here before you're starting to pop off the shoulder armor. So upward movement of the arm is still going to be a little bit limited. While we're here, I'll just point out to you that you can see even up inside this yellow part, you've got some detail in there, like little hose and vent details up on the inside of this yellow part here. So again, this is a kind of kit, and I'll just keep coming back to this point that once it's fully painted up and you really bring out all the little details here and there and everywhere on this kit, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Even if you're not the kind of person that goes in and adds like scribing and custom panel lining and custom details on the kit, you really don't need to do a whole lot of that on this or any of that to really have a super detailed looking kit once it's all fully painted up. I mean, just paint up and accentuate all the details that are already here existing on the kit and it's gonna look super detailed. And while we're on that note, I'll just mention this, up inside the yellow parts there, behind the yellow part, just the white part back of there, which you can kind of barely see, that's, there's even vent detail up inside there behind the yellow vents on the front of the chest there as well even. It's pretty amazing, but here for the arms, we've got some rotation there at the top and this elbow joint, which is pretty amazing here as well. So you can see when you bend that, you have a separation with this uh, middle part of the elbow and also the, once again, piston there at the back that will separate that for a really nice full bend there. And then take a look at that one more time here from the front, because here on the front there's the two separate little white pieces and the upper one will go up underneath this one here when you fold that up that little piece will disappear up underneath that armor bit to really get the full extent of that bend. And what's more, this part here for the hoses on the back of the arm, that's also, I think this will be easier to show you if I take the arm off the kit, but once that's loose, you can see those are hanging a little bit loose if that's just in a straight pose, but when you bend that, those uh, tubes on the back of the arm get pulled up into there. So as once again, if you can see that, it's just little details like that of the articulation that just make this pretty amazing. And then as for the wrists, while we're here, the wrist is on a hinge, so you can not only just rotate that on the peg, but there's also a forward and back hinge here. Thumb is just on a ball joint, and the fingers are just the swappable type, so we have sets of fingers for closed fists, as well as a set of fingers for holding hands, and these have grooves in there to slot into the grooves on the weapons for a nice solid grip. And then we also have a set of just open expressive fingers here as well to have open hands. Now these open hand or these different hand options are really great and the details on them all look really nice as well. The only thing that I don't really like about the thumb is that even with the closed fist, the thumb doesn't quite rest down all the way. So it still kind of looks like his thumb is still just kind of like sticking out in a weird way, even when he's got the closed fist like that. So if you're looking at it from the right angle, you don't really notice. But if you look at it from the wrong angle, it looks a little bit goofy. But all right, now back to the skirt bit. So the waist section is pretty normal. There's not a whole lot really too special or exciting going on with this. The front skirts are just connected on ball joints and those can lift up. You got uh, not really a whole lot of detail up underneath there. But from the front, they look good and they're not really in the way of anything, so those look nice. The side skirts as well will move up and down and then those can also rotate forward and back. But otherwise, again, just not really gonna be anything too special to really note here. Just again, some nice detail all around for those. The back skirts aren't on boulderings, but they are just on pegs so you can rotate those up and down like that. Actually, lifting up the back skirts does actually allow you to see a little bit of the high gloss gold plastic that we have for this. This part's here on the top of the thighs. The other gold parts are hidden up underneath the chest and up underneath the leg armor, but that high gloss gold does look pretty good when you can actually see it, which is just not very often. But while we're here, before we continue down to the legs, why don't we take a look at the backpack as well. This part here in the center will fold out like that, so that just opens up and again, detail up inside there, detail up on the underside of this black part, and just detail everywhere on that. These parts here, of course, will come off to connect onto the uh, long smooth bore gun, so that just folds out. You've got that on a piston, and there's a little tab at the end of this piston part to make it so it's not easy to pull off. You can, of course, just pull it out 
pretty easily if you pull on it. But as long as you don't pull on it too hard, you're not likely to just pull that part off there accidentally. So that's just connected onto here and you can move this all around like that to connect onto the gun, which we'll see here shortly. But so that all seems to work pretty nicely and just fits back up into there. And you can see you've got hard points on the back of the backpack, on the back of the arm, on the back of the waist section for other different option parts. Now back to the legs and starting up here at the top, the hip joint will just allow this up to move up and down like that. There's no swinging hip joint to move forward in this case. It just moves up and down and each one is on an individual peg so the right and left leg can move individually up and down there. You just got some rotation up here at the top and of course rotating that does allow you to see those gold parts a little bit better, something like that. But again, that's a separate great part there at the front, no stickers, no seam lines on these parts, everything's all covered. So we can bring that leg all the way up to the front like that, bending that at the knee and there's going to be some pretty cool action here. So this part here on the back of the leg will fold back to get out of the way for a nice good D bend. And these parts here on the side of the leg also move actually. So let's just, again, I think it'll be easier if I just take the leg off of there. So, all right, so watch these parts when we bend the knee, those parts on the side move individually. And this part here at the back also moves to get out of the way for that knee bend like that. And if you want, you can just rotate these actually to be pointed backwards like that since they're supposed to be kind of like thruster sort of bent sort of details like that anyway. So you can rotate those back. And then moving that back into place, you kind of have to manually set these parts back to where they're supposed to be but still it's pretty awesome everything that went into that you have the piston up at the top these uh, hose details down here at the bottom and everything when this all moves together like that all just works super well and looks really awesome like that so all those parts moving is really cool we've still got even more yet down here at the bottom this part of the front of the foot of course moves up and down like that the foot the toe itself can point all the way down it can point up and down and move that all around moving the foot forward you got this piston there at the back of the leg as well it can rotate this side to side like that and then up underneath the feet you got full detail there really cool and just everything here is just detailed out like crazy every detail that you expect to be there uh, the yellow vents up in there look great the clear pink part looks great but again definitely throwing some silver and or white behind that will just help that glow even nicer so that'll be awesome so man i think that just about covers it for all the articulation and just the gimmicks and features of the kit itself but as you can see there's a lot going on here and just all of just the construction of everything for just the general construction of this kit i mean it gets a 11 out of 10. it's a pretty amazing there's no seam lines on this part of the kit itself that you need to worry about, only just a little bit on the weapons, which we'll see in a moment. But we do also need to talk about his accessories, of course, so you do also get this big sheet of marking stickers for this. Now, as I mentioned in the unboxing, you do also have some of the Tekadun logos there that are kind of like already pre-weathered, kind of the damaged logos. Let's give you a closer look at those. And we've got some other just kind of uh, logo markings down there, and then there's a bunch of caution markings and stuff, so you can just throw these on the kit if you're so inclined. I just didn't in this case. Of course, it would've been nice if these were water slide decals, and Hopefully Bandai will make a water slide decal set for this kit because it'd be nice to have some of these. These are really nice in terms of just their design. I like them a lot. So it's just a shame that they're just sticker decals. And of course, we've also got our action base adapter for this and our 1 to 100 scale Mikazuki August figure here, which I do also quite like this one as well. It's a good size. It seems like it might be a little bit larger than it should be for 100 scale. It seems pretty big, but I don't know. I have to measure it and get pretty scientific about that to know for sure. Just my, at first, it seems a little bit larger than it should be, but I'm totally okay with that. With it being a little bit bigger, just means it'll be a little bit easier to paint. And then we've got these two connector pieces for the back. Now these can either be used for the sword or the mace. So first off, here is the sword. Now it's just two parts, the one main part for the whole handle and body of the sword the blade. And then you have the white part that just fits over the top of that. There's no sandwiching parts, just one solid piece. You just slide down over the tip and then onto the handle there for that and it looks really great again all along the blade you've got some nice detail along there the handle is really nicely detailed and you can see these are the grooves for holding into the hand the holding hand how i mentioned it has grooves in it so you can see there's different options where you could place the hand holding it at different points along the handle because it is a pretty long sword stood next to the kit itself it comes up just about to his face there so it's a pretty long weapon and that is pretty much the theme for all of his weapons because here we do also have the mace which is let's see just about a little bit longer so the mace will actually be taller than the gun them itself 
uh, here in its full length. It does actually get a slight bit longer and then you don't necessarily have to do this but you can push the handle in and that will just poke out the pile driver there just a little bit so it's kind of easier to grab with your fingers and pull that out. So you pull that out to there and then pull the handle back out to where it is for the full extension of the mace like that with the pile driver spike sticking out the end and I really like that how it's not just like a it's circular it's like hexagonal in its shape so it looks really cool just the design of this is really nice you can hear I don't know if you guys can hear that shaking and so it sounds like this that's just the parts inside just kind of sounds a little bit rattly but I mean, otherwise it's pretty solid. You do have a little tiny bit of seam line on this part right in there with like the two main halves of the mace where they come together. There's a little tiny bit of a seam there. But otherwise, again, nicely detailed. Nice in the fact that they detailed it down a little bit. I think the original prototype showed the handle with a lot more detail on it and I wasn't into it. But I think they detailed that down a little bit and it looks much nicer. Now you got spiky and here at the back side as well. And a cool feature that it doesn't show you anywhere in the manual is you can actually take these parts off the side of here and use these as blades, just two sides, not all four, just these two sides. And then basically you've got this big halberd weapon, which you can still use. And two parts of this can be just turned into just handheld daggers. And once again, we've got the little notches here in the handle, which will fit very nicely into the holding hands to use these just as just handheld weapons on their own, which is a pretty awesome feature. And it's a shame they didn't mention that in the manual because I'm just worried that some people may end up missing that detail. But it's not like we necessarily have any shortage of weapons with the sword, the mace, and the gun. I think people aren't going to be wanting necessarily more weapons, but it is always nice when we do have more weapons included. So the fact this has that kind of extra gimmick that Bandai did mention in the manual it's a little bit disappointing but at least now all of you guys know that that gimmick is also included and so we can move on to his final accessory which is the smooth smooth bore gun there we go I like how this is in three tones you have the darker brown the lighter brown and white parts all for that this one does have some seam lines here on this part of the barrel here and then this long part of the barrel there's a seam line all down the middle of that but as far as the main body and everything on this back half there's no seam lines anywhere on there and again just really super nicely detailed here I think it looks fantastic and aside from the eyes the only other foil sticker we have for this is for here on the camera lens for that I wish that would have been a separate clear green part there for that camera or at least a separate part to fit inside of there to make that a little bit easier to paint but if you don't want to paint you can just use a sticker so I'm actually planning on just keeping a sticker and using that I think probably on my painted build as well because the stickers for cameras do end up usually working pretty well so obviously as you guys know this does have some gimmicks with this as well the handle will move forward and back like that and also moves side to side to hold on to that this part here at the back will move like that for holding on to the part of the backpack that comes around and grabs onto that and then of course the whole gun itself folds up we can slide that forward rotate that back and slide it back and the white part will just kind of oh, there we go slot into place there like so for our collapsed form of the gun now this will attach onto the backpack you can see these little gray parts here on the side those will actually extend out a little bit and then that will form a kind of groove slot system here where then this can just slide right into there for a storage on the backpack like that that works really well and looks great and it's the same thing for our connector pieces for the sword and mace they can just fit on here to the other side so you can't store all three weapons on the back at the same time you'd have to store two on the back and one in the hand I think that works out pretty well you just slot the connector into place there like that and then the sword down into there like that should click into place there you go stored on the back like that so very cool all right, and I know you guys want to see this compared with the 100 scale non-grade kit. So here it is, as you can see, some definite, easy to notice pro proportion differences here between the two as well. And I mean, just pulling the old 100 scale kit just out. I personally never really had much of a problem with the 100 scale kit. I thought it was a nice kit, uh, but man, this MG just completely demolishes it. Just blown out. It's night and day, the difference between the two of them. The old 100 scale kit now just seems like an old 100 scale non-grade double o kit in comparison like it's fine and it looks pretty good but it's just not going to compare to this master grade here and i even like the, the slight color differences the white the blue the red is all pretty much the same the red is a little bit darker but the main difference that i really definitely appreciate too is the yellow the yellow is a little bit more orangish yellow than just straight up yellow as it was with the original kit it's just a very small difference there even too, just the use of the clear parts rather than the stickers for the markings on there. And then just the stickers in general. This one has some color correcting stickers you know, here and there around on the kit. The color, color separation of the head is pretty good. Uh, but I mean, just this one, 
Just obviously in terms of the color separation and part separation, it just completely blows it out of the water there with not needing any color correcting stickers on it at all. Now, of course, the old kit did give you the option to make the arm with the shield on it. Now, some of you guys may be wondering if those parts will fit onto here. No, they won't fit on there without any modification. You'll have to modify that in order to get these parts to fit onto the new Master Grade. But I assume we'll probably will see different versions of this Master Grade coming out as P-Bandai exclusives probably later on. But I can definitely say without hesitation that if you had a choice between the two, just get the Master Grade. It's pretty much just better in every way. And on the question of money, uh, this one being 2,500 yen, this one being 4,500 yen, obviously it's kind of almost double the price, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. It's just that much better. But man, guys, once you get this thing into some action poses is where you're really going to see it shine. Because just standing, I mean, it looks pretty cool. You can see all the details and everything like that. But when you get it into some action poses, here's where you're going to see where all of the engineering that went into the frame is really put to the test. And it comes out doing amazingly well. I mean, it's all really solid, so it holds the pose really well, and just the way that everything moves makes it look so natural, and it looks really fantastic just in these action poses, and especially for like a Gundam like this, where uh, like the fighting style that we saw in the anime is this really visceral, sort of almost animalistic melee fighting style like that, and just the ability to recreate the poses like that and make it look really cool like this with the kit as well is awesome, much better than what we've been able to do with the high grade and the 100 scale kits so far. And even posing it with the smoothbore gun which I did have some worries about just because anytime you're holding a big gun like that with a gun it's a little bit awkward and I think actually connecting it onto the backpack works really well uh, but probably holding this holding the gun in a when when it's not connected to the backpack you'd probably be open for a little bit easier to posing and some different posing options once it's connected onto the backpack that is going to give you some nice kind of interesting support and it looks cool there at the back but I think if you don't connect it onto the backpack you're probably just uh, you'll have a wider range of options for how you want to actually pose that while it's holding the gun. Uh, that said, there is a little bit more articulation in the backpack than I alluded to before when we were going over the articulation of that, the whole kind of inner part of the connection for the kind of extended arm of the backpack does also sort of slide down and rotate a little bit more, so there's a little bit more into, uh, in, into that than I mentioned earlier. Even though it's a little bit awkward to hold the gun, it still looks fantastic and everything about this kit just looks great. There's just a couple little, little tiny bits of seam line there and a couple parts of the weapons and otherwise that is pretty much it just there's detail everywhere and as i've mentioned in the live build i really liked how the weapons do seem to match the look of the kit really well a lot of times you get to the weapons and they're just they don't really seem like so much of an afterthought but they just seem definitely noticeably simpler than the kit itself in this case obviously the weapons are relatively simple they don't have a huge part count just because of the what they are you can definitely see that they're can definitely see how they match the kit just in terms of their style and details and everything just they look really great with the kit itself and so just in conclusion guys if you couldn't tell I'm going to highly recommend this kit to anyone especially if you're an IBO fan I know there's a lot of Iron Blood Orphans fans out there you definitely have to pick up this kit and even if you're not even if you're just a fan of Master Grades or just Gumpla in general even if you're not that big of a fan of the Barbatos I think this kit is so interesting and so well engineered and just a really fun and complex build and it takes quite a while to get this kit put together I think anyone who just enjoys building Gumpla is going to enjoy building this kit even if you're not a big fan of the original design I think Bandai did a fantastic job with this I wasn't totally convinced when it was first announced some of the details and proportions I wasn't really sold on uh, but I think it ended up coming out really really nice and I'm really looking forward to working on this so as I mentioned before and as I mentioned in the unboxing I am planning on painting this up straight away so I, I don't know if you guys can tell maybe you can have you been able to tell a little bit in this video but I've already got some parts of this already sanded I was already working on doing some of just the sanding and cleanup work prep work on this a little bit already just as I was preparing the parts for the live stream build but I've got a little bit more just kind of prep work to get into first before we can get into the painting process but I'll do a couple of work in progress videos because it's gonna be a good process for this just I mean I'm not planning on doing any modification or anything to it but just the painting and detailing process of this especially is going to take a long time because there's so much detail in there and I think just to really do this kit 
justice to bring out all the amazing detail that Bandai's packed into the kit. It's going to take a good amount of time, but it's going to look amazing when it's all done. So I'm still deciding on the color scheme and I've got another kit that I'm also working on at the same time. So I'll have a work in progress video for you guys out very soon. We'll get started working on this straight away though, and I'll go over any issues. And like I said, removing the couple seam lines that I pointed out in there, we'll go over all of that in the work in progress videos. So stay tuned for those in the very near future, uh, this coming week, that'll be coming up straight away. So, and so again, just want to say a big thank you to us at Gundam Store uh, for their support. Wouldn't be able to do everything that I'm able to do uh, without the support from them. So they're awesome. You guys are awesome too. Thank you so much for watching. There was a lot to go over in this review, but I really wanted to make sure to emphasize everything that is fantastic about this kit because it is a really great kit. So of course, if you guys have any other further questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below. Thank you all again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.